The first one is AI in kindergarten. So let me tell you a tale of two countries from the AI Superpowers book by Kai Fu Lee. Now, U.S. media reports described a nation in shock shortly after the launch of the Sputnik satellite. Science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke said that the day that Sputnik orbited around the Earth, the U.S. became a second-rate power. It had an instant and profound effect on the American psyche and government policy. And less than a year later, billions went into initiatives ranging from defense to research, and it led to the creation of the National Aeronautics Space Agency, or NASA. The U.S. was graduating fewer scientists uh, a year than Russia. So Russia was graduating more scientists per year. So lawmakers passed the National Defense Education Act, or NDEA, that provided financial assistance, and it helped more than double college enrollments from 15% of age-eligible students to 40% in under 10 years. So that's a huge, huge feat. Now, you might be wondering, okay, okay, Maybe I know this story already, like, why are you saying it again? And, you know, what does this have to do with AI? Well, first I got to explain the game of Go. So many of you have heard about the game of Go. The game of Go was invented more than 2,500 years ago in China. Uh, chess, if you look at the total range of possibilities, uh, it's around 10 to the power of 120 uh, possible moves. But if you think about it, like Go has not 10 to the power of 120, but 10 to the power of 174 possible moves. Now that's more than double the number of planets in our known universe, number of possibilities difference. And so the emphasis in Go has always been on calm thinking and strategy rather than tactics. And it was seen as kind of like the mark of true intelligence in China. And it, for thousands of years, it's been seen as like, this is the pillar of, this is the pillar of intelligence, like of the, the calm thinking mind in China. Now in China, um, over 280 million viewers watched the 2016 Go match where 18 time world champion, Lee Sedol was defeated four to one by AlphaGo. China was swept by an artificial intelligence fever. And only a year later, and this is, it's funny how history repeats itself because this is, this is very much the Sputnik playbook. Uh, just a year later, the Chinese central government announced a plan to be the center of global innovation in AI by 2030. So Chinese venture capitalists that year poured record sums into AI startups, making up 48% of all AI venture funding that year and exceeding the United States for the first time. So they're investing more in AI than any other platform or any other country. And remember that image that I showed earlier? <laughs> let, me, let me bring it, let me refresh your memory just in case. Remember this image right here? So in 2018, photos of an artificial intelligence textbook for Chinese kindergarten students, this photo, uh, went viral. It turns out that UNESCO AI researchers and AI researchers from Google, uh, the Institute of Automation of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and top Chinese universities all collaborated on the textbooks. And the aim was to democratize AI education in a hundred Chinese schools and to introduce preteens to the basics, to strengthen teenagers' capability for using intelligent and applied technologies, and to help train hundreds of new AI teachers. So the initiative also um, included 
a cloud-based AI e-learning platform that students can access via their like computers or WeChat uh, if they were on mobile. Uh, the platform also supports major machine learning frameworks, including TensorFlow, uh, which many are familiar with, uh, CNTK, uh, which is kind of the Chinese equivalent of TensorFlow, and Cafe Programming. Um, and they included programming environments such as Scratch 3.0 and Python's integrated development environment. And anybody who's doing development in AI is typically using Python is very common uh, for a lot of AI development. So it's a, a very capable tool, even for like commercial use as well. So in April 2018, we're talking just like two years, I guess, since that event, uh, the Sputnik moment in 2016. 40 high schools in Shanghai uh, began using this Fundamentals of Artificial Intelligence textbook that I just showed, the later versions of it, um, compiled by SenseTime. Uh, and those, if you don't know what SenseTime is, it is a unicorn startup in AI, and it's considered the world's most valuable AI startup, and it's located in China. So you might be thinking, oh man, like teaching AI in kindergarten, that's got to be like really hard, right? But actually, it turns out there are really great resources uh, online. And there are books available that make it easy to discuss. Uh, and so I'm not I'm not talking like from a theoretical perspective here, I've actually tried some of these examples out with my five year old son yesterday. Do you guys want to see some of these examples? So maybe you've seen some of these examples, and I don't want to completely bore you with the details, but I do think it's very important if you are not familiar with them, take a look at these examples because they are really, really cool. So I'm going to bring up the Mac. Okay, hopefully you can see that and you can see me. So these are, um, you go to experiments.withgoogle.com and you should be able to see these examples. Uh, so. Uh, what you'll see is a collection of different AI experiments. And on them, uh, what I really like is this one, Teachable Machine by the Google Creative Lab. Um, and you can also go to teachablemachine.withgoogle.com. And here, uh, they have a number of different examples. And so I like these examples because they are fairly easy to understand and they're fairly easy to work with, with kids on. Uh, so... Hmm, where's the rest of the pages on this? Okay, no problem. Uh, launch experiment. Yes, here it is. Okay, yes. So they have three different examples that I really enjoy. Um, one of them is just being able to classify different types of images, which I thought was really cool. They have another one which deals with sound, so it could detect the difference between clapping, snapping, and whistling. Um, and so that was kind of fun. Uh, and there's another one that specifically deals with poses. So uh, the pose example was one where you tilt your head to the left, you tilt your head to the right, and it will, it will track your face and it'll tell you like, oh, you're tilting one way or the other. And so to actually play them, you don't need any code. You can just um, like, for example, with the head tilt one, and I apologize, like this is not going to look great because it's through my camera, but um, you just go down to the very bottom of it and then you can click, I exported this website on Glitch. And so Glitch is just like a place to run some code and you have to authorize to use your camera. And then once you've done that, you can you can basically run this example right away, which is kind of cool. Um, oh, allow, sure. <laughs> so might be asking for more permissions than I'm allowing it to do right now, which is cool. Uh, it could be also because I'm doing the live stream, so it's not going to work. Uh, no worries. So to me, like, um, examples, like I mentioned, the, the, the head tilt, the sound of a clap, um, or a snap, or a whistle. Um, and they also have an example of detecting the ripeness of a banana. <laughs> and that was fun. Like, we even, uh, like, my son and I, we, we ate the banana afterwards to see if the ripeness actually matched the AI prediction. And we learned the hard way that actually, mm, it didn't. And we may need to retrain the AI for organic bananas since they turn a little greenish color when they ripen. And so what I love about this is even if it doesn't work perfectly, this is a beautiful example. And it's a great opportunity to have a discussion about why the teachable machine did not work. Why didn't it work? Did it not have enough data? 
they did not have enough examples of ripe bananas, uh, was the AI only looking at color? So we could do some experiments like what happens if I have a yellow shirt or I have something yellow in the background? We could try that out too, right? And the, the reason why this is so important is because understanding where it gets things wrong is actually the, the key purpose of this. Like this is why we're doing this discussion. And helping us understand AI, at least from the basics perspective, is so important because we're, we, I feel like we're at this massive fork in the road right now for education. Uh, I've talked about how we can either choose to move towards creative learning and we'll understand the AI technology or we will choose to not learn it and then we'll be moving towards this world of AI proctored learning and working. That is like people are using AI to monitor if students are cheating on exams. And this proctoring is not only going to take place in education, but also in the world of work as well. Uh, in the freelance economy, your ratings basically determine how much new work will come your way, which is a really important point. And my suggestion is if you do nothing today, like these mini, these tiny little experiments are an easy to, thing to do at home as a starting point. Uh, you can see this and many other examples uh, at experiments.withgoogle.com. And so go and check it out. Those would be fun. And maybe I'll just write it down, experiments.withgoogle.com. So that's a, that's a fun little uh, example to try out. So I'd love for you to, to see it. Uh, when do you think this change will be fully implemented? Okay. So Alice asks, oh, how come I can't see it? Mm, what's going on? Oh, I see. Yes. No. Sorry. So um, Alice asks, when do you think uh, this change will be fully implemented? And I think this is a, a good comment to highlight now. Um, my understanding is that it depends on which country you, you're asking, but in China, this has already been implemented. In 2018, uh, there were the 40 high schools. Now, in terms of full implementation, my understanding is that they have set very specific targets for 2020, 2025, and 2030. And so there will be expectations of broader rollout. Um, and I think like they need to get things started 2020, and then they have to show like very specific improvement by 2025. And then by 2030, the expectation is they are world leaders. Um, so my expectation, Ellis, is that this is happening sooner uh, than we think. And in terms of full rollout, I mean, you won't become the world leader unless you have the full rollout uh, before then. So probably 2025 uh, to 2030 is their current plan, uh, at least in terms of implementation. And so that's exactly why it's very important to talk about this now. We're like early 2021, um, <laughs> still has some time to, to consider it. And I, I do think it's a good point because it helps us galvanize our group, our population towards one particular goal. What do we want our future to look like? What do we want to be able to win at? Um, the question is, is the U.S. working on this as well? That's another great question, Alice. Um, so my understanding is actually yes um and that leads me to my next point actually thank you this is perfect <laughs> this is your your timing is fantastic so uh i want to refer people to another discussion that i found that was really helpful uh was chapter two of the teaching ai book by michelle zimmerman uh, she's located in seattle and she's an like an education researcher who's been who's been working on this for some time and in chapter two, what I like about her, her book is that she does it with interviews. Her chapter two is called Preparing Students for the Future. And what it is, is a series of case studies where she interviewed a number of people who actually worked on AlphaGo or like who are design leads at Google. And so they're, they're written by experts in the field. And I think that this is, this is really good. So the AI book by Michelle Zimmerman, uh, is a really good resource for educators. Uh, she does that full interview with the Google AI researchers um, and like the product developers on the future of work. And I think that that's a good discussion because like hear from them, 
But hear from the professionals who are already working on this. What do they say? What's going to happen with work? Um, and what do we need to look out for? So that's a good, that, that would be my recommendation um, is because they're already, these are discussion items. They have questions that are already designed to be very relevant. Uh, like it's a very relevant topic for the different age groups. So she's kind of already designed that. And so rather than reinvent the wheel here, I'm going to recommend you the, the kind of the good stuff. 